Lord Uni being common father does not allow himself to actualize anything. And now, my boy, after my tale about this Lentroham salmon, thanks to which you have received a concrete picture of the consequences for later generations of the activities of a typical representative of eternal Hasnamus individuals, it will be opportune to explain a little more in detail, as I promised you, the significance of the word, Hasnamus. In its widest sense the word, Hasnamus, designates any free brain being, whether he has already coded his highest being parts or consists of his planetary body alone, in whose common presence, under the influence of certain, individual impulses, a certain, something, arises which participates in the, completed formation, of his independent individuality. This, something, arises in these cosmic individuals and, during the process of the transformation of substances, blends with the crystallizations resulting from the action of the entire, spectrum, of what are called, Nalu'uznian impulses. Single quote. In accordance with the chief cosmic law, the sacred Heptaparaparchina, this, Nalu's mean spectrum of impulses, in its original essence consists of seven heterogeneous layers, from the point of view of their engendering as perception and resulting manifestation. And if these different aspects of the entire, the spectrum of Nalu's knee and impulses were described according to the notions of your favorites and expressed in their language, they might be defined as follows. 1. Every kind of depravity, conscious as well as unconscious, to the feeling of self-satisfaction from leading others astray. irresistible urge to destroy the existence of other breathing creatures, or the inclination to free oneself from the necessity of making the being efforts required by nature, by the tendency to make use of every kind of artifice to conceal what in the opinion of others are one's physical defects, six serene enjoyment in the use of what is not personally deserved. 7. The striving to be not what one is. This, something, which, together with these, Nalu'uznian, impulses, arises in the presences of specific individuals not only as the cause of, painfully retributive consequences for these individuals themselves but also has the particularity that, whenever one of these, imperious tendencies, ceases to act in their presences, the radiation proper to one or another aspect of the manifestation of this, something, has a greater effect on surrounding beings, and becomes a factor for engendering the same in them. In the common presence of every free brain being, there can arise during the process of his planetary existence any one of four kinds of independent Hasnamus individual. The first kind of Hasnamus individual is a free brain being who, while acquiring this, something, in his common presence, still consists only of his planetary body and who, during the process of the sacred Rastuarno is subject to the consequences of the properties of this, something, in him and is thus destroyed forever such as he is. The second kind of Hasnamus individual is a free brain being in whose common presence the question body has already been coated with the participation of that same something, and, as is proper to such a cosmic arising, having acquired the property of Torinorino, that is, non-decomposition, in any sphere of that planet on which he arose, 
has to exist such as he is, undergoing certain transformations, until this, something, has been eliminated from him. A Hasnamus individual of the third kind is a three-brain being in whose common presence the highest being body, or, soul, has been coated, again with the participation of this, something, and this highest being body also acquires the property of Toronorino, but this time corresponding to this highest coating, that is to say, it is not subject to decomposition, either in the spheres of that planet on which he arose, or in any other sphere of the great universe. The fourth kind of Hasnamus individual is like the third, but with this difference, that the Hasnamus of the third kind has the possibility of at some time becoming so to say, cleansed, from this, something, whereas for the fourth kind this possibility is lost forever. That is why the fourth kind of Hasnamus is called an, eternal Hasnamus individual. For these four kinds of Hasnamus individuals who have this, something, in their presence, the, retributive consequences, I have mentioned do not entail the same suffering, but correspond to the nature of each as well as to the, oh, objective responsibilities flowing from the original foresight and hope of our common father for these cosmic actualizations. the Hasnamus of the first kind, who acquires this, something, while consisting only of a planetary body, the decomposition of his planetary body does not proceed according to the general rule, that is to say, all the various sense impulses in his organism do not stop functioning simultaneously at the approach of the sacred Rasguarno, that is, death. But the process of the sacred Rasculano already begins in him during his planetary existence and proceeds in stages, that is, one by one his, separate spiritualized localizations gradually cease to function in his common presence, or, as your favorites would say, in such a being first one of his brains with all its functions dies, later on, the second one dies, and only then does the final death of the being occur. In addition to this, after the final death, the disintegration of all the active elements of which the planetary body was formed proceeds much more slowly than usual, and is subject to the inextinguishable action, lessening only in proportion to the volatilization of the active elements, of it, Marusnian impulses, sensed during his life. For the second kind of Hasnamus individual, in whose common presence the question body has already been coded, these retributive consequences are that, on the one hand, such an indeed unfortunate arising, free from the planetary body of a free brain being, and not having the possibility of perfecting himself independently without a planetary coding, does not succeed in eliminating from his presence this maleficent, something, which is not necessarily acquired by his own fault, and which always and in everything in the universe is an obstacle to the correct flowing of the common cosmic proto-autobocratic process, and on the other hand, owing to the property of Toronorino. That is, not being subject to decomposition in any sphere of that solar system in which he arose, 
He must inevitably be coated in a new planetary body, usually with the exterior form of a being of a one or two brain system, and in view of the generally brief existence of such beings and of his not having time to adapt himself to any one exterior form, he must constantly begin all over again in the form of another being of that planet with all the uncertainty as to the result of this coating. And as for a Hasnamus individual of the third kind, namely, a three-brain being in whom the highest being body has been coated, but with this, something, participating to the extent that he has not lost forever the possibility of freeing himself from it, his fate is still more terrible for, as a higher cosmic horizon predetermined by the foresight of the first principle of everything existing to serve as a help in the administration of the enlarging world, who from the moment of his completed formation, even before being perfected in reason, was held responsible for every subjective manifestation, voluntary or involuntary, he has the possibility of eliminating this, something, from his presence, but solely through the action of the results of intentionally actualized Kartal Bhuti, that is to say, of conscious labor and intentional suffering. Such a higher being body must therefore suffer unremittingly, according to the degree of cognizance of his own individuality, until this, something, is entirely eradicated from his common presence. Is a place for the suffering existence of the high orders of Hasnamus individuals. The higher sacred individuals have intentionally allotted from all the large cosmic concentrations for small planets, disharmonized in their subjective functioning and situated in various most remote corners of our great universe. One of these four disharmonized planets, called Retribution, is specially prepared for the eternal Hasnamus individuals, and the other three for the higher being bodies of Hasnamuses who still have in their presence the possibility of ridding themselves at some time or other of this Maleficent, something, single close. These three small planets exist under the names of Remorse of Conscience Repentance, Self Reproach, It is interesting to note that from all the highest being bodies that have been coated and perfected in every kind of exterior form of free brain being of the whole universe, only 313 have, so far, reached the planet retribution, two of whom had their arising on your planet, and one of these is the highest being body of precisely this Lentrohamsanin. On that planet retribution, the eternal Hasnamus individuals must constantly endure those incredible torments called Incurinandal, which are like the suffering of remorse of conscience, only much more intense. The greatest anguish of this state of the highest being bodies is that they must always endure these terrible sufferings, fully conscious that there is no hope whatever of their coming to an end. Quote, second, book, chapter 29, the fruits of former civilizations and the blossoms of the contemporary. In following the associative flow of my tales about the three brain beings breeding on the planet Earth who have taken your fancy, I must now tell you, my boy, something about the two powerful communities they're called, Greeks and Romans, who swept away from the surface of that ill-fated planet even the memory of the results obtained from the most saintly labors of the essence-loving Ashiata Shemash. First of all I must tell you that at the time when, 
on the surface of your planet, on the continent of Asia, the definitized sacred conception of our now omnicosmic, very saintly Ashiata Shimash was actualized from above within the presence of a three-brained being, and also later, during the period of his very saintly activities and the subsequent gradual destruction by your favorites of all the results issuing from them, great numbers of those strange free-brained beings existed on the neighboring continent called Europe, and had already grouped themselves into various independent communities. According to the cosmic laws I once mentioned to you, the two communities that during those periods became the greatest and most powerful, that is to say, better organized and possessing more means than the others for the process of reciprocal destruction, were the Greek and Roman communities. And about these very ancient communities, ancient, that is, from the point of view of your contemporary favorites, I must tell you impossibly even in detail, for not only did they make a clean sweep from the face of that unfortunate planet of the last results that might have been beneficial for the three brain beings of all subsequent epochs, and even of all trace of the memory of the very saintly labors of the essence-loving Ashiata Shimash, but also they were the cause of the utter nonsense that proceeds in the reason of your contemporary favorites, and of the complete atrophy in them of that fundamental being impulse, the main lever of objective morality, called, organic shame. A closer acquaintance with these large groupings of your favorites and with the various blessings bequeathed by them to the beings of later epochs will help you to understand how separate independent communities are formed there, and how a given community having become powerful, with no thanks to the beings themselves, takes advantage of this to begin destroying everything attained by other less powerful communities and forces its own, new inventions, upon them, in most cases sincerely imagining that these are just what the others need. I must warn you, my boy, that my story of the arising of those ancient communities called the Greek and the Romans and of everything later connected with them is not based on my personal investigations but only on the information about them that I got from one of the beings of our tribe who chose to remain forever on that planet of yours. In descending to the planet Earth for the sixth and last time, I was determined, at any cost, to elucidate for myself all the genuine reasons why the psyche of the three brain beings on that planet, which should be like the psyche of all the three brain beings of our great universe, had become so exceptionally strange. And having repeatedly confirmed, during my investigations, that the fundamental cause of the various abnormalities in the general psyche of contemporary beings was the so-called civilization spread by these two large groups of beings called the Greeks and the Romans, I was obliged to investigate certain details about them also. But as I was fully occupied at that time with my research concerning the activities of the very saintly Ashiata Shimash, I entrusted the inquiry into the history of the arising of these two independent groupings of your favorites, with respect to what is called their subjective being, to that same member of our tribe who, as I have already told you, still carries on an undertaker's business in a large city on the continent of Europe. From the investigations of this countryman of ours, it seems that long, long ago, before the 
period of my tale about the majestic city of Babylon, that is, when the existence of those strange beings was proceeding mainly on the continent of Asia and their chief center of culture was in the country of Tikliamish, there were as yet no definitely organized communities on the continent of Europe, which is now the principal place of existence of your favorites. At that time, there chiefly existed on that continent two-brained and one-brained beings called wild quadrupeds and reptiles. As for your favorites, the biped beings, they existed there only in small groups and were almost as wild as the quadrupeds themselves. These small groups of biped beings occupied themselves only with destroying the quadruped and reptile beings, and occasionally also one another. And the number of your favorites on the continent of Europe did not increase until emigrants from Morocco Sea, wandering from one region to another, finally arrived on the continent of Europe and settled there. Toward the close of that period there migrated from Tikliamish to that continent a number of beings of the first. Asiatic group who followed two quite different professions. Some of them were engaged in various marine occupations, and others in raising cattle and sheep. The sheep raising families settled chiefly on the southern shores of the continent, which at that time were very suitable for the grazing and fattening of these quadruped beings. And that group of terrestrial beings was then called, Ladenaki, a word that meant, shepherds. First these shepherds, with their families and flocks, were scattered in different places later on their numbers gradually increased, partly through the immigration of Asiatic beings with the same profession as themselves and partly because they were becoming more and more prolific, since nature on the planet Earth had begun to adapt herself to the deteriorating quality of the vibrations she required which should have been formed from the radiations of these three brain beings, by substituting those vibrations obtained only from the process of their sacred, Rastuarno, or, as they say, from their, death. And when thanks to all this their numbers had considerably increased, and external conditions demanded frequent relations between isolated families, they formed their first place of common existence, which was called, Rimke. It was from that group of Asiatic shepherds that the later famous, Romans, originated, their name having come from this first common dwelling place, Rimke. As for the Asiatic beings engaged in, marine occupations, such as fishing and gathering sponges, coral, and seaweed, they also emigrated with their families for the convenience of their profession, some of them settling on the western shores of their own continent of Ashart, some on the southeastern shores of the continent of Europe, and others on the islands near the straits that still divide these two continents. The beings of these newly formed groups were then called Helenaki, which meant fishermen. In time their numbers also grew, owing to the same causes I spoke of with regard to the group of shepherds. Their name changed many times until finally they were known as Greeks. And so, my dear boy, it was largely on account of the beings of these two groups that the reason of your contemporary favorites has become mechanical, and that the data for engendering the impulse of being shame have completely atrophied in them. The Greeks were the cause of the gradual decay of the reason of the three brain beings there, which has so degenerated in contemporary beings that it has become, as our dear Mullah Nasser Eddin says, a real, mill for nonsense.
and it is thanks to the Romans that, as a result of successive changes in the presence of contemporary free brain beings, those factors are never crystallized which in other free brain beings engender the impulse called, instinctive shame, that is, the being impulse that is the basis of what are called, morals, and, objective morality. And thus it was that those two communities arose which, as so often happens there, later became solidly established and powerful for a certain time. And the history of the Maleficent, legacy, they passed on to the beings of subsequent generations is as follows. According to the investigations of our countrymen, it seems that the earliest ancestors of the beings of the community that was later called Greece, were obliged, during the frequent storms at sea that hindered them in their marine occupations, to seek refuge from the rams and winds in sheltered places, where they played various games they had invented to kill time. As it later became clear, these ancient fishermen at first amused themselves with such games as children play there. The children, it must be remarked, who have not yet gone to school, for today those who go to school have so much homework to do, consisting chiefly of learning by rote the poetry composed by various candidate hasnamuses that the poor children never have time to play any games at all. In short, these poor bored fishermen first played ordinary children's games long since customary there, but later, when one of them invented a new game called pouring from the empty into the void, they were also pleased with it that from then on they amused themselves with that alone. This game consisted in formulating some question or other, always about some nonsense, that is to say, a question about some deliberate piece of absurdity, and the one to whom the question was addressed had to answer as plausibly as possible. Well, it was just this game that became the cause of everything that happened later. It turned out that among those ancient board fishermen several were so clever and ingenious that, following the principle of that curious game, they became expert in inventing very long explanations. And when one of them discovered how to make what was afterward called parchment from the skin of the fish called shark, some of these skillful fellows, just to swagger before their companions, even began inscribing these long explanations of theirs on these fish skins, employing the conventional signs invented earlier for another game called Mousecraft. Single quote. Still a little later, when these bored fishermen had been replaced by their descendants, the latter inherited these inscribed fish skins as well as the craze for this peculiar game, and these various inventions, both their ancestors and their own, were given for the first time the high-sounding name of science. And from then on, as the craze for hooking up these sciences passed from generation to generation, the beings of that group whose ancestors had been simple Asiatic fishermen became specialists in inventing sciences of every sort. These sciences, moreover, also passed from generation to generation and certain of them have reached contemporary beings of that planet almost unchanged. Hence it is that almost half of what are called the egoplasticory, arising in the reason of the contemporary beings of that ill-fated planet, from which, in general, what is called a world outlook, is formed in beings, are crystallized just from the truths, invented by those bored fishermen and their descendants. 
as regards the ancient shepherds who later founded the powerful community called Rome, their ancestors also were often forced, on account of bad weather, to seek refuge for their flocks in sheltered places, and to pass the time together somehow or other. And so, since they were together, they did a lot of talking but when everything had been talked out and they felt bored, one of them suggested that as a relief they should take up the occupation which they were the first to call Shinfu Contra Luna.